I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Chain Reaction. The reason it's called that is because every time you make a decision in the Charleston, it affects the hand going forward, so it creates a chain reaction. We're going to test our instincts by doing the exercise two times using the same tiles. We'll look at the tiles, identify the strengths, and pick a plan A and a plan B for the two iterations. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do two iterations in this exercise using the same tiles. We'll act as a Fort East, so we'll get 14 tiles, and I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers. We have a joker, pair of flowers, pair of green dragons, one five nine in cracks, one six eight in dots, three six nine in bams. This will be interesting because we have no multiples with number tiles. We have a pair of flowers and a pair of green dragons. This is where I would start. I think let's take a picture of our starting hand so we can recreate this. And I want to look at 369. The 369 dragon hand uses flowers, so maybe we can leverage this pattern right here. 369. I would keep the other 69 because maybe we could switch to like numbers with dragons, and then we can, let's say, pass those three. So I would focus on 369 with those dragons and flowers. So we're going to pass these three. This is the first pass. We're going to take a photo. We have a white dragon and twos. We could maybe do a year hand, but 369 dragon with flowers has no gaps. I think I would let those go and let one of these go too. I was thinking like numbers with the dragon, but we would need dots and cracks. Let's let that go. Let's see, did I take a photo? You wanna make sure you take a photo along the way with every pass so you can recreate it. So we're gonna take a photo of that one. We got a keeper. 369 Dragon. Let's pass those three. And then we're going to take a photo of that. I would probably stick with this. So let's let that go. Let's take a photo. With the five, we could do five, six dragon consecutive run and we have tiles we can pass. We'll take a photo. Three south four, those are not helpful and that makes a good pass. And we'll take a photo. Here we have a four. Three, four, five, six, consecutive run. We're on the optional cross. I think what I would do is switch to three, four, five, six for flexibility and let that go. Three, four, five, six, dragon, pair, pair, pung in here somewhere. So let's pass those three. We got a two. So we have options. 
2 through 6, pair, pair, pung in here somewhere. This would be the second hand from the bottom. I would say that was a good Charleston. And we have five discards, but we have options. So we're going to reset to the initial original deal and I'll recreate the Charleston passes. And then we'll pick another direction and compare results. So remember, probably five discards with options. That's what we started with. And I forgot to identify a plan B. We went with 369. So I think a plan B was going to be maybe like numbers. So let's keep the sixes, the ones, and let those go. Oh, nines we could maybe do. So basically like numbers with dragons I think is one of the potential categories I was thinking. And then along the way, maybe a year hand because we got twos. So let's see if one of those would have been a better choice than 369. We'll pass those. So here's the twos. This is where the like number or year category came in. But we can't keep it all. We're building around the dragons we would need dots and cracks. So probably ones because this is the opposite dragon from these two suits. Dots and cracks. So maybe what we should do here is keep the cracks and maybe even the six. That would be a bit of a risky pass. I think I would maybe break that up a little bit. Green dragon. So there's a pung. I would definitely think about like numbers with dragons. So cracks and dots are going to be the key because we need the offsuit dragon. We have three tiles here. We need to add something. Let's let that go. Oh, we got a six. But then look what that leaves us with, like numbers with twos. I wouldn't do that. Let's see here. Maybe what we should do is break up the ones and keep the six. Hope for another suit in a six, building around multiples. This would be a gap hand. It's risky. Let's see what happens. We got a two and a north. Let's keep this two and then pass these three. Okay, so we got a three and a four. Four crack, two crack. Let's pass these three. There was a four going around, a four dot, and I think was a two dot going around or was that a two bam? We're really hoping for a six. Oh, we got it. Six crack. And we actually got the four bam. Oh, no, that's the wrong suit. We want dots. So let's pass those. Look, we've got a hand here. We'll pass those. I don't think we'll get anything in here because I don't remember there being a six crack in here. But my memory is not that great. Okay, no, no keepers. And we have the same number of discards, but we have a hand. I think this is, I think it has equal potential because we had options with our run in the consecutive dragon hand, but here 
we could Kong there, maybe Kong there, we just need help here. I think there were equal results and this, this would be a challenging hand because we have five discards. I usually like to be at four discards or less. Three is ideal. In the other iteration, we had options, so that might have more flexibility. Here, we're picking specific numbers, so this might be more challenging. Even though we have a Pung, and we could even Kong here, we would need help here. I think it had equi equitable results with like numbers. If you would have made different decisions, write your commentary in the video description below. American Mahjong is a very flexible game and it's forgiving. If you make the wrong decision during the Charleston or if you make a mistake, you typically have time to recover. Build around multiples. If you don't have multiples, Build around the predominant pattern until a multiple forms. And don't pick a hand till you run out of discards. Play at the category level and stay concealed as long as possible. That should optimize your potential to win. Whether you win or lose, enjoy the journey. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.